On my review table today, I have the Jetbeam WL20, a flashlight designed for hunting. It can be mounted to a rifle with an optional accessories that Jetbeam produces. This light produces three colors, white, red, and green, and features two LEDs per color. Thanks to Jetbeam for sending this light out to me to take a look at. Let's look closer at how Jetbeam achieves this multicolor hunting light. Just a fair warning, this review is going to be a little bit long, but I think you'll want to stick around and hear more about this light. So here is the packaging that the WL20 comes in, and it's a big box. It doesn't quite fit on screen here that well. Nice retail box. Here is the runtime chart as you can see here. And you've got all the relevant information. Nice retail looking box. Here are the accessories that the light comes in. You've got your bag of accessories. You've got the uh, extra button here and an extra uh, land, uh, an extra O-ring. You've got a nice jet beam branded lanyard here with the thin end. You've got a micro USB cable to charge the included 2600 milliamp hour uh, battery. It's got USB on it for recharging purposes. I've got it installed in the light. And then you've got this uh, holster here that the light comes with. You've got a plastic D-ring. It is Velcro belt loop there. It's a big um, holster. You've got a little bit of padding here, and the light fits in there quite snug and nice. So ahead of this light is what sets it apart from all the others. You can see in here, it rotates around the body, and when it does, it clicks into place, as you might be able to hear there, and shows the LEDs. This light has six LEDs. Every time you rotate it, it shows two. So you've got the white, red, and the green. Between the colors, it's got a pretty heavy detent that almost requires two hands to operate, especially when I've got this uh, arm in a cast yet. It makes a pretty loud click when moving between modes, and I'll hold that up to the mount mic. The light itself is made from this black anodizing, and the front here has this nice polished aluminum bezel. It's a nice look. You've got some added grip here. It's a nice place to rest your hands. It fits pretty well in the hand here. The bezel is fairly sharp. The lens is interesting. It has two deep recesses for side-by-side -side LEDs configuration with the middle part cut out uh, for better reflection. The rest of the head has some milling for heat sinks and the area milled out to provide a bit of grip when you turn the body. The body below here is much smaller and it's got some um, knurling on it and six flat areas with two of those flats being milled in further with all the markings on place. The tail cap has one main on off buttons and it stands proud and is textured with a rubber grip. It's a pretty stiff button and can be used as a momentary or a full on off switch. Next to the two buttons are these patented paddles. They toggle back and forth. They are metal and don't have a ton of grip on them. These are used for mode selection and act as pure momentary switches. The tail has small holes for attaching a lanyard there, as you can see. And the light doesn't tail stand due to its uh, proud tail cap and just top heavy configuration. Looking inside here, we can see the square cut threads and they're just ever so slightly greased. You can see the nice O-ring there. Inside the tail cap here, we've got a very stiff dual spring setup. And the light also has uh, two springs inside, although there's really not much give on there. Just moves down maybe an eighth of an inch. Overall weight with the included battery is 218 grams, so it's on the heavy side. Maximum diameter at its widest point is 42 millimeters. Minimum diameter is 26.5 millimeters. Length is 146 millimeters. And the light is IPX8 water rated. As I mentioned before, this light uses a total of six LEDs. The white LEDs are Cree XPG3 S4 LEDs in a very cool white. The red and green LEDs are only mentioned as 3535s. The lens is deep and produces a beam pattern that would be that was better than I expected. It's a bit egg-shaped in the split, but it's but the hot center is pretty round at short distances. At longer distances, it's pretty normal. Okay, here are my night shots for the Jet Beam WL20 and I'm going to try and be quick here because I'm just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. This is a neat, interesting weapon light or hunting light that's got three LED colors in it. Okay, so here's white on low and jump up to medium or the next mode. 
the third mode, and the last turbo brightest mode. This is 1000 lumens, and you can see here it throws pretty well. It's a wide beam. You can see all those bugs just coming at me, eating me alive. If I long press, I get strobe. I'm gonna turn the head here, and here is green. Green's pretty spotty here, same reflector, but uh, this is quite a few less lumens, but to the eye, it's great. This would easily be able to spot out to 100 yards, a little more, um, no problem. Nice and bright, this is one mode only. If I go to red here, this is the brightest red mode. Not, it doesn't throw as far as green mode does, but it's still fairly bright. And this is the lower of the two red modes. Not nearly as bright, but still probably too bright to read a map or something like that. I'd use probably that low white mode for that. So again, there's the brightest mode in red. I'm gonna switch to... There is the brightest mode in white, and it's a pretty cool white. And there is green. Jetbeam ships this light with a 2600 milliamp hour micro USB rechargeable battery. However, the official run times they give on the package and at the manual are done with a 3500 milliamp hour cell. All my tests have been done with the 2600 milliamp hour cell that it's shipped with. To save time, I won't go into depth describing each run time and just give a few facts and provide the graph here for you to look at. So on the white LED setup, total run time was 150 minutes with it flashing near the end to let you know you were running low on power. Turbo, 1000 lumens, was good for about five minutes before stepping down to high. And step downs were hard steps. The red LED total runtime was 140 minutes with a slow decline, but it ran at 80% power for most of the time before an abrupt end and low voltage protection kicked in. The green LEDs total runtime was about 130 minutes with one small step down after the 90 minute mark. The end was an abrupt shutdown in uh, three short, short stages. The UI of this light depends on what color mode you have it in, and there's no visual indication of that on the outside of the light. The large round button on your tail cap is your main on and off here, as you can probably see. It works as momentary as well if you want, and it's pretty stout. The momentary paddles work for momentary, and when you, the light is turned on, if your uh, color has a mode to it, they can be used to select the modes. To rotate between colors, you rotate the head of the light. I'll just kind of show this here. We have white going right now. I keep rotating, I have green, and I rotate again, and I have red. In green, this light has one brightness level at 300 lumens, and the paddles work for momentary. So if I shut it off I, on the paddle, I have momentary. The center button is on and off. Red has two modes. High is 120 lumens and 20 lumens is low. The paddles work for momentary and will cycle the light. If it's constant on, the paddles just will cycle the light. High is the default and it does not have memory on this mode. In white, this light has four modes. Eco here, which you can see is 20 lumens. Low is 120 lumens. High is 330 lumens. And turbo is 1000 lumens. The light starts off in turbo if using the main on off switch here. And from there, you can use the paddles to advance from eco, low, high, and back to turbo. When hitting the paddles, when off hitting the paddles gives you instant access to strobe, or when on, a long press on the paddles gives you strobe. The WL20 comes with a Jetbeam branded 2600 milliamp hour button top battery that has built in micro USB recharging. It says it's rated for one amp charging here, but the best I was able to get was 0.73 amps, and this resulted in an empty battery taking four hours and 40 minutes to recharge. Personally, I'll use a more traditional charger instead to uh, speed things up. One note about durability of this type of battery, and this isn't a dig about the Jetbeam battery myself, it's just this micro USB recharging style battery. Um, these work by including an additional circuit board, so that makes the light longer than normal, so it doesn't fit in all lights. It also adds another point of failure. This light could be mounted onto a rifle, and that adds an additional uh, 
failure point due to recoil. In a hunting environment, you probably won't be taking a lot of shots, at least if you're going deer hunting or something like that. Pig hunting is a different story. But in a more tactical environment, you might. And I'd recommend using a button top battery without protection uh, or USB or charging for better durability if you decide to uh, use a light like this or any other light on your weapon. So for me, the pros are one-handed operation and rotating that emitter lens setup makes it unique and it works pretty well. That is, if you have two working hands. The heavy detents and big buttons makes it easy enough to use with gloves, but it almost always takes two hands to rotate that head into a different color mode. This light offers the brightest red and green modes that I've tested thus far on a flashlight. And it throws pretty well and has a decent beam pattern for a side-to-side -side LED configuration. For me, the cons are, this is a relatively heavy light, and while you can mount it onto a firearm, I don't think I would want to because of that weight and the battery that it ships with. The white emitter has a very cool tint. I'd prefer a neutral white or warm white myself and for that UI to start off in eco mode. I'd prefer a white emitter mode to have one additional moonlight mode since red's still a little bit too bright for close up work. And like I said before, that head rotation is almost a little bit too difficult, especially when wearing a cast. And the manual and packaging aren't 100% in sync with to what LEDs are in this light. My conclusion is I was pretty interested in how this light accomplished its multi-color LEDs and how much that would compromise beam quality. The good news is it was a lot better than I expected. It's not a perfectly round beam, but it doesn't have many artifacts or ugly pieces to it. It's, it's pretty good. As a weapon light, I think there are better options here that are smaller and better suited for attaching directly to a rifle. However, as a hunting light that you might hold in your hand or use to get to a tree stand or blind or to hunt down an animal wounded after a shot, I think this would work fairly well. It has the strongest green mode on any light I've tested and, that, and it throws pretty well, so that'd be useful for finding blood trails. It's nice to see that it offers red mode with two brightness levels this is a niche light, and there are probably better options for the vast majority of people. However, for those that need a hunting light that's multicolor, this is certainly an option for you. This would do the job for that, or like I said, for using in the hand um, to find your animal after shots. If you made it to the end of this long review, thanks for sticking with me. As always, I appreciate likes and subscriptions. They help me to continue to bring videos like this to you.